Today, we're going to look into the society and culture of the Roman Empire. But first, we would like to thank our viewers and subscribers for their support. You guys are great. Thank you and keep watching. By the way, if you haven't watched our previous video regarding the political evolution of the Roman Empire, please do so. This video is in continuation to that. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to receive updates on future uploads. Thanks. So let's begin. Roman society had certain distinguishing features. The widespread prevalence of nuclear family was one such feature. A household generally consisted of parents and their daughters and minor children. Adult sons did not live with their parents. Adult brothers rarely shared a common household, but the slaves were counted as part of the family. Fathers had substantial legal control over their children. They had legal power of life and death over their children. The Roman women enjoyed considerable legal rights. They inherited their ancestral property. A woman continued to retain full rights over the property of her natal family even after marriage. She became an independent property owner on her father's death. She enjoyed freedom to own and manage the property. Marriages were generally arranged. After marriage, the wife did not transfer her assets to her husband. However, her dowry did go to her husband for the duration of the marriage, but she continued to be the natural heir to her ancestral inheritance. Divorce was relatively easy. Both the husband and wife enjoyed the freedom to dissolve the marriage. Literacy was considerably widespread. Many people could read and write. In this respect, all the regions of the empire were not at par. The rates of casual literacy were at variance between different parts of the empire. In Egypt, for example, literacy was widespread among the soldiers, army officers, and estate managers. Many professional scribes were there who wrote formal documents such as contracts, but literacy was not prevalent among the common populace. There is, however, strong evidence of widespread casual literacy in Pompeii. There, we find the main streets often carried advertisements. Likewise, graffiti was found all over the city. The Roman Empire was a multilingual empire. The Egyptians spoke Coptic. North Africans conversed in Punic and Berber. In Spain and the Northwest, people communicated in Celtic. Let us remember that all these languages did not have their script which was invented later. These linguistic cultures were therefore oral. Coptic had a developed script before the 3rd century CE. Armenian came to be written from the 5th century CE. Latin displaced the script of many widespread languages. Thus, Celtic ceased to be used after it was replaced by Latin. While Rome was still a city-state, Roman religion was the religion of the original inhabitants of the city. Polytheism, that is, multiplicity of gods and local religions, both Roman, Italian, and Greek, was the mark feature of the traditional religious culture. The tribes settled in Rome had their own deities. Jupiter, also called Jovis, or king of gods. June, Jupiter's wife. Neptune, brother of Jupiter, Venus, the goddess of love, Mars, the god of wars, Minerva, etc., were among the numerous Greek and Eastern gods that the Romans worshipped in thousands of temples, shrines, and sanctuaries throughout the empire. Thus, Roman religion was polytheist that worshipped many deities simultaneously. Polytheism had no common name or label to describe. Religion was formerly a part of the Roman state. Under the monarchy, the kings presided over state rituals. The religious affairs were regulated by state institutions. Under Prisipate, even kings had come to be regarded as gods and were worshipped in the temples devoted to them. Christianity made its way to the Roman Empire. The process of spreading Christianity among different groups of the population and the making the dominant religion was difficult, gradual, and complex. Initially, Christians became victims of the state as they did not worship Roman gods. But by the 3rd century CE, the religion had acquired large following. It was not possible then to annihilate it. Later, the preachers of Christianity adopted aggressive posture. As a state religion, Christianity grew in leaps and bounds. Under Theodosius, Christianity became the state religion. The church acquired enormous property. It increased the power of priests. There thus emerged two great powers within the empire, the state and the church. From now on, these two organizations, civil and ecclesiastical, were to live side by side. 
through alternating conflicts and alliances. That's it for today. We're gonna look into Roman institution of slavery and the disintegration of the Roman Empire in the next video.